update. I know that my husband regrets throwing me out, but I can't rush my healing. 39 female, 41 male. Original post. My husband's best friend's wife, Ellie, work at the same company I do. We are not very close because I always felt that she didn't like me. Anyway, apparently she had a crush on my husband. My husband and I often get invited to parties at their house, but I didn't go to Ellie's 40th birthday last August. She had a huge party, but I was just starting with my worst morning sickness period, which nobody told me were not only reserved for mornings. Ellie made a move on my husband and he got very upset and turned her down. Ellie got angry and told him that everyone was doing it. All married couples cheat. Her husband was cheating and I was cheating. She told him it was a colleague of mine, a colleague my husband already disliked. When my husband got home, he was drunk and very upset. He confronted me and I told him it wasn't true, but he slept in the sofa. A couple of weeks later, he told me to move out. Apparently, Ellie provided my husband with information about my infidelity, late working hours, etc. I was shocked and had nowhere to go, so I moved in with my parents. My parents thought I was cheating too, and I felt like they had to take me in. I never felt so hurt in my life. How could my husband so simply believe such thing about me? Then he demanded a paternity test. In November, my husband found out the truth when another friend's wife told her husband what Ali did. My husband apologized and was devastated and wanted to make it up to me. He told me when Ali told him he didn't believe her. Then he found out that she was telling the truth about her husband being an adulterer, so he thought she was telling the truth about everything. If I wasn't pregnant, I would never have taken my husband back, but I just don't want my baby to be born without his parents being together. I love my stepdad, but he never loved me like he did his biological children, my half-siblings, and it gave me a lot of pain growing up. I moved back home a month ago, but we are still in therapy. But nothing feels the same. I don't even know what I feel about my husband. Sometimes I love him, sometimes I don't. He is trying to make me happy again, but he feels my change. Last time we made love, he kept telling me to come back to him, and then broke down crying while we were still intimate because I wasn't there, and he started blaming himself. I don't know what to do. I know I'm being a bit distant and it's not intentional. I need this to work, not only for our son but for us too. Help me find my way back to how it was. Or at least give me ways to cope and try to live with the knowledge that things may be a bit worse moving forward. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Sounds like you need his and hers therapists and a couples to complete the hat trick. That's if you really think you want to make this work. And I'd give that some serious thought. If this was a complete departure for him, maybe that's worth it. But if you can't find it in yourself to forgive him, don't stay for the sake of the baby. Modeling an unhealthy relationship isn't going to be any better for your child than growing up with parents who are separated. Model happiness for your baby instead. Possibly relevant, did he cheat too because he thought you had? I understand everything you're saying. I just feel that I want this to work. We are in couples counseling and he is in therapy since everything happened. He didn't cheat exactly since we were divorcing, but he withdrew it when he found out I wasn't lying. But yes, he had slept with people. Something I can't shake off my mind every time he comes near me. He was pretty quick to distrust you and start sleeping with other people. I definitely think you need therapy, both separately as individuals and as a couple. But I don't think you should have to speed your healing. He betrayed you and destroyed your trust in him, while also harming your relationships with others. You are staying because your stepfather wasn't a good step-parent. Some people are amazing step-parent. Having a child is not a good reason to stay in a broken relationship. This will hurt the child way more than having divorced parents. Your husband didn't trust you. He put someone else's word over yours. He broke his vow done during marriage that you would be his partner and him yours. That you would be a team. He threw you out while pregnant, not even knowing yet if the kid was his. He had no right, as it is a marital home. I think it is a big mistake to go back to him, especially given your reasons. Update. Hi again. Thank you for the support. I didn't expect anyone read my post since it got too long. But thank you for caring, really. It feels weird that strangers are far more understanding of how I'm feeling than the people who love and know me. There's something I want to bring up, however, and that's that I got a lot of aggressive messages about my last comment that got downvoted, about whether my husband has slept with Ali or not. I'm so confused to why I got downvoted and later attacked in a private chat. I was asked a question and I answered the truth, and I wasn't trying to defend my husband. 
Actually, the reason why he would never do it is because he loves and respects his friend. He wouldn't do that to him. It has nothing to do with me, and to be honest, it saddens me. I mean, I don't want him to have slept with her, but it saddens me that my husband would never cross that line with a buddy of his when he chose to trample all over me and our baby. So I'm very confused to why you hated my answer. Ellie and I still have the same workplace. I'm not changing my life because of her. And to those of you who are angered by the fact that I didn't seem as mad as her as I'm with my husband, believe me, I hate everything about her and her husband. I just didn't think her worthy of the smallest amount of my time and energy. But for those of you who are curious, I exposed her and her husband to every single person we know. She works mostly from home now. Because again, the people who don't know me as well as my family. My co-workers had no problems believing me with no hesitation. Many of you have requested an update, and many of you who contacted me asked me if my husband knew how I was feeling. I haven't spoken a lot with him, I just never had the energy. I feel exhausted all the time, physically but more so mentally. I'm so tired, and some days I can barely do the simplest tasks like eating or taking a shower. I'm fine or I'll be fine is just so easy to say. My quietness is good enough indication for my husband to get an idea about how I'm feeling. But no, I have never really put in words how I've been doing these past few months. I'm mostly silent and in our couple's sessions too, trying not to cry. It's basically him breaking down about how bad he hurt me and how guilty he felt every time he remembered how he doubted that our baby is his. I believe everything he says and I feel that his guilt is genuine and heavy. He says he deserves it and that he never wants it to go away that he should always live with this guilt because of how he treated me. I believe this too. It's just not enough for me, however. We had our first session for this year on Tuesday and I was more verbal then. I told him how I felt when my husband chose not to believe me, chose to sleep with others and break my heart, but worst, how worthless and disposable my baby and I were to him. I told him the truth that I wasn't sure I will ever forgive him. His only chance to get me back is to give me space and peace. I told him I never want to feel worthless again. I have a good job, and I can fend for myself and my baby, but that I want my house. He needs to put it in my name so nobody can ever kick me to the streets again. I never want my baby to be disposable again. So, I want the inheritance my husband got from his father to be put in a trust fund for him, and that my husband has no access to it, and I want my husband to move out. I made it very clear that these are my demands, without any guarantees we would stay together. This morning he told me that he agreed to everything, but he wanted me to promise to let him be present when our baby is born, because he's already lost so much time from the pregnancy. He can't stand the thought of not being there for our baby's first weeks. I agreed and honestly, I never wanted to do this alone anyway. He is moving out this weekend. Your husband slept with others in that short time period? OP, I think they downvoted you saying you don't believe he slept with Ellie because you used an emotional standpoint where he placed someone higher than you. So they disliked it. Logically, if Ellie got shut down by her husband and then opened his eyes to all these neighborly infidelity, the first person to attack your husband and keep attacking him after you leave would be Ellie and your husband would owe her one for exposing you. I hope it didn't happen. I'm just theorizing why you might have got downvotes for that. I'm sorry you're going through this. Yes, he was very angry and wanted to get over as fast. This is what he said. Wow, I'm really proud of you. It must have been so hard to stand up for yourself and put your needs into words. I really wish you the best and hope that you can heal from this and at least manage good co-parenting, even if you should decide on not staying with your husband. Thank you. I thought of what was important to me and my baby. I want to never be put in that position again, and I want to make my decisions from a place of power. If I ever take him back, it should be because I want to, not because I have to. And I'm sorry this post got even longer than the last. Next story. My boyfriend asked for a paternity test for our child. As soon as the results come and show he is the father, I'm leaving him. I'm a new mom to a baby boy who is my pride and joy, though it's been a roller coaster adjusting to taking care of a baby. The past few months have been great. Tiring, but great. I have a boyfriend of three years who is the first person relationship-wise I have ever loved. And I thought we were doing great as new parents but also as partners. Friday, he came home and he asked me for a paternity test. Just like that. It was completely out of the blue. I was putting away the dishes and he asked for one, like he was asking what was for dinner. 
I'm a different race from him, but our child, apart from the skin tone, is literally his mirror image from pictures I had seen of him when he was a baby. I was stunned when he asked, and his reasons were that he had to be sure he was the father. He had to have that certainty. All I remember as he was speaking is just immediately feeling pain. The man I love doesn't trust me. He would actually believe that I would sleep with someone else, cheat on him, and then try to pass off another man's baby as his. I have never ever given him reason to think I would cheat on him. I have tried to be transparent and communicated, and it wasn't enough. He told me he would give me time to think about this, that he wouldn't go behind my back and do this test, but for our relationship to move forward, he needs to be 100% sure. He repeated this because he, in his words, needed me to realize how serious he was. After thinking for a couple of days, I'm going to allow him this paternity test because I have nothing to hide. I never cheated and would have never cheated on him. But once it's proven that he's the father, I'm ending it, leaving the same day and I'm going to try my best to be a cooperative co-parent with him. In the meantime, I'm coming up with my exit plan, a place to live, and a lawyer to work out a custody arrangement and court. I can't even tell my family or my friends right now because they would go nuclear. And my first priority is our child. I hope the test was worth it to him. I'm not asking for advice or reassurance or to explain his side. I just… I'm just realizing this part of my life is now over. What a way to start the new year, huh? Now for the top advice. Did you ask what suddenly made him change his mind? Who is he talking to? I'm thinking a group of friends got into his head, and he's not going to expect her to leave, especially as he said, for this relationship to go forward. Which sounds like an ultimatum. You just had a baby. You are helpless. You must do whatever I say. Because you are totally at my mercy and I have all the power. Well, surprise. It also sounds like, are you sure it's my baby? I want to be somewhere else. And if it's not mine, I won't have to pay any child support. He sounds kind of checked out whatever it is. Well, at least she'll already have a paternity test handy to prove it's his kid for child support. If he already signed a birth certificate, it might not matter. Many states only require legal parenthood and not biological. Not telling others is a good thing. That way, you know it won't get back to him. He can't backtrack after the results come in. I'm petty. I would also record him saying it and then record him getting the results. Just so you can play back for him in the future. Also, if he ever lies and says he never said it. So much this. Definitely record what he is saying and his reaction to the test. Also, keep a copy of the test. Last story. My best friend's husband confessed his feelings for me. Her life was very difficult, and she says she's finally happy. How do I tell her? Mia, 32 female, and I, 32 female, met in college, and were best friends ever since. Mia was always very family-oriented and romantic, even when she was a kid. Her ultimate life dream is to have a big, happy family. Sadly, Mia had very difficult childhood. She lost her entire family, younger sister and both parents from ages 10 to 12. She was in the system for a while, until her awful uncle took her in. Obviously, Mia was slash is very mentally unwell, and just a few months ago, she managed to get off her meds and stopped going to therapy. Mia and her husband Rick, 34 male, are together for two years now and married for six months. In my opinion, it was all a bit rushed. But Mia was getting scared she won't be able to have children if she waited. And to be honest, Rick seemed to be her perfect match. She was aware things are going faster than she initially wanted, but reassured me that her and Rick are on the same page. It's her life after all. So if she's happy, so am I. Rick and I never love nor hate each other. He's my friend's husband. So at best, we tolerate one another. We don't have any common interests and our lifestyle slash life goals are different. Fast forward to the New Year's Eve, me and Rick organized a party and invited me and my partner, 31 male, to join. Everything seemed fine. Rick and I were chatting with some friends when I decided to go outside to breathe in some fresh air since the house was very crowded. Rick followed a few minutes later. We casually talked about some irrelevant things when he suddenly says he's in love with me. I thought it's one of his stupid jokes and I was totally blindsided by it, so I just laughed, joked back and hoped he will drop it. Sadly, he just doubled down and got visibly upset, started saying how he doesn't want to spend another year in happy, and how being with me is exhausting because of her trauma, and he deserves better than that. At this point, I got very nauseous and just wanted to get away from it all, so I told him he has no idea what he's saying, and we will talk once he gets his act together. 
Mia and Rick are trying for a baby, so I obviously have to tell Rick up. The thing is, I have no idea how to do that. How do you approach a person to tell her that the best part of her life is a lie? How do you address something like this with a person who spent vast majority of her life in antidepressants and being self-harming? I don't even know if she'll believe me. I also don't want to lose her as a friend, but I can't watch her be all happy and giddy about him when I know he doesn't even freaking respect her. There are times I think to just ignore it all and never mention it, but I know that isn't right. You have to tell her, and it may mean she chooses him and you lose the friendship. But I couldn't live with a secret. I'd get her one on one as soon as possible and be upfront that you have bad news, so she can sort of be prepared. I'd frame it as, "This is so horrible. I don't want it to be true, but her husband is not a good man, and she needs to know. It's up to her what she does with this information, and you'll be there for her whatever she decides, even if that's staying away for a while. Her world might totally crash down with us." Offer any and all support you feel is right, but be patient with her potentially lashing out as she reacts to this news. You need to tell her, but before you do, you need to try and record another conversation with him about this issue without him knowing. Depending on how lost or where you are from on consent for recording, with him saying what he said, because even if Mia does believe you without a single piece of proof, he will almost certainly try to turn this on you and say that you were the one trying to come on to him. Yes, I will definitely try to talk to him again about it for the proof. It's just that the entire thing is absolutely insane to me. I know love is blind, but I can't imagine anybody buying the story that I was the one who initiated the conversation. The fact he actually did it is crazy enough. I've been with my partner longer than he even knows Mia, and he doesn't know me enough to be in love with me. I've never given any idea to this man that I might be interested, and neither did he. I have moments when I question my own sanity and wonder if that conversation even happened.